Hello, dear listener. My name is Tony Co. Welcome to the very first episode of our new podcast, Refinement, Not Retirement, which I'll be co-hosting. Hey. Yes, I'll be co-hosting with my adorable wife and life partner, Christine. Say hello, Christine. Hi, everybody. So this isn't our first podcast. We have done uh, a podcast previously in connection with our business, which we'll be talking a little bit about. That uh, podcast, if you want to check it out, is called People and Property, the relocation podcast, and it's on all good uh, podcast platforms. Well, that's not what this uh, this uh, episode is about. This is the first episode of our new podcast on the subject of retirement or rather it's not because we actually don't like using that dreaded r word but don't worry we'll get into that and try and explain our thinking on that if we can sort our own thinking out on that which will be a bit of a miracle uh but we want this uh, podcast to be a bit of a different uh, podcast than other podcasts and materials about retirement but more on that later but just for now we're so delighted to have you with us on our retirement journey which begins right here right now so we are christine and tony co formerly from london but we now live in a beautiful quintessential cotswold village called elmley castle where we've been living for the past three years after our escape uh, to the country away from south kensington an area of, of of london for those of you who don't live in the uk and that had been our place of work and our home for many a decade but now for the first time in some 40 years uh, for the first time in our lives in fact we're out of a job at age well actually you would sell me I've been out of it for quite a while Tony really you've been well, teasing me I know but I can't say that that I gave up a long time ago ha ha okay. might have given up certain things but not not still working hard in our beautiful new home that's for sure well folks at age 66 going on 67 we decided I'm already 67 you are <laughs> again I didn't want to say that publicly uh, but it's we okay. decided uh, it's time to move on to the next exciting chapter of our lives together a chapter that most people call retirement so this uh, new podcast of ours is I suppose about retirement but as I've mentioned we prefer to avoid that our word you see we see retirement as a bit of a negative concept uh, an ending when a player retires say from a tennis match they withdraw they they completely stop competing they give up but we rather see uh retirement uh as a another transition just one of many sort of course corrections that we've made on our voyage through life together so did i say that right Chris, what do you? Yes, I think I think yes, I think what what you're trying to say is we are refining ourselves, and we have been refining ourselves for quite a long time. Um, I'm not can't remember where you got that word from, but I think you rather liked it and adopted it very quickly. And I think it's a great word because uh, people do are looking at us a bit funny when we go, "No, we haven't retired. We've re we're refining ourselves." Well, actually, I will remind you where I got it from. Uh, we yes, went, please we, do. As you know, I probably, again, shouldn't admit this publicly, but when I was much younger, I my, one of my favourite uh, groups was the Osmonds. Uh, I'll say that oh, yes. quietly. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, uh, yes, yes, I'd forgotten and that. And well, rather in a moment of nostalgia, we booked tickets, didn't we, at, uh, at Cheltenham Theatre for... Uh, the Osmond story, I think it was called. Yes, yes, it and, was. And, uh, you know, I always loved the Osmonds, their harmonies, their music was was fantastic. I think they were a lot more successful musically than than people give them credit for. Uh, but I think that's right. During that show, uh, they talk a lot, or Jay, I think, is the person who leads the story. They talk about a lot about... Um, uh, their father, who was obviously, you know, a very influential uh, figure uh, in their lives. Sorry, I've, I've just remembered I forgot to set the uh, stopwatch, which is not a good idea because otherwise I can't keep a track of the time. But I think his name was George, George Osmond, and he was kind of a, like a military figure. I think he was ex-military. And, uh, you know, he was, he, I think he was the one that sort of kept them away from, from drugs and, and falling off a cliff like so many musicians do. Uh, but 
they Jay says during the story that when he did in fact retire, uh, he says, well, he didn't call it retirement, he called it refinement. And that really stuck with me. Um, yes. Because yeah. I've never, as you know, um, Chris, as you well know, I've, I've never really seen myself ever as retiring. I never wanted to retire. I just really sort of saw myself working until I, I dropped. Uh, so, and also, you know, when I became a grandfather, which I'm now, what, six times over? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't want, I never wanted to be called a grandfather. I suppose it's sort of a bit of denial, really. I, I wanted, you know, I'm, I'm referred to by the grandchildren as Bampy, which is the Welsh for, I think, a grandfather. But I much prefer that to grandfather, because otherwise I feel like someone who should have a pipe and slippers and be going around on a well, you could Now you sound like a clown, so Bumpy the Clown. That's <laughs> yeah, good, Bampy. too. Well, I prefer to be a clown than a yeah. you know, bumbling old guy, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is actually what I am. Uh, but, yeah, that's how that's how we – that's how – you're quite right. That's uh, – uh, I was the one that sort of came up with that. Well, I didn't come up with it because George Osmond did, but I really liked that. So we've gone, as you know, through several transitions in our lives as part of a continuing process of, of refining. Uh, so by refining, we mean making changes that Im improve our lives. Like, can um, I just jump in there? Because I think just speaking out loud now or thinking out loud is the way we've done this has never really been a huge thought process. It's It's been the way our lives have just taken us and we've been guided through some sort of um path that is we haven't like said right we're going on this path today we're going on this path tomorrow we're going on this path next year our paths have just sort of appeared in front of us um, um all extremely positive paths i would feel and we have automatically and instinctively followed the right path that has felt right for us. Um, and I think every, every path we've taken has, has always been great. Um, so I think this, this, you know, I'm not saying it's our last path, but I think the path that we're on now also feels so positive and so terrific. Um, it, it, it's you know some people say to us are you um you know how you how you're getting on how do you feel um even when we left london if you remember you know how how are you how are you dealing with it and we've never had one ounce of regret have we in anything we've done which i think is you know hands up to say that i think that's pretty impressive because a lot of people say, you know, what's the one thing you regret in life? And I don't think that's a good thing to say. Well, I regret this or I regret that. Because life has a way of taking us and guiding us. And I think our, our positivity um, ha has has just been uh, amazing, really. Uh, uh, just a wonderful path that we've always gone on. And it's always been the right one. Well, in my opinion, it's well, so. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I would look back on all the decisions that I've made to say I've always made the right decision. But I, I think when we look at what we're now referring to as refinements, I mean, those, yes. are, the, those are the things that, and um, you know, there have That's been major thinking. ones. Yes. Those, those yes. are the things which have been course corrections, which have been undoubtedly positive. And we, and we probably yes. tune out the decisions that we make that were in the other direction. But well, yes. if, maybe if we could give our uh, listeners uh, uh, some examples, uh, you know, I, I, when I think of my life as a sort of age groups of my life, up to age 40, I was completely focused on finances, just keeping my head above water, paying paying the mortgages, not losing the family house. That was my primary focus, because that's before you. Um, and I absolutely had zero uh, life, work life, I think they call it work life balance. I didn't spend enough time with my family, certainly missed my children growing up. I worked ridiculously long hours. Life was all work, no play. But as I approached my 40s, I understood with, you know, sort of increasing urgency, the need for uh, a better work-life uh, balance and that, that, if you like, refinements were required. So between the ages of, let's say, 45 to 60, 
Um, I had started, uh, you know, with your help, <laughs> with a great deal of help from you, to achieve some financial success uh, in a modest way. I mean, we're not we're not claiming that we are you know, great financial whiz kids or anything like that. We just, I think, we've just done reasonably, reasonably well. Um, and I was able to shift my focus towards that better achieving that better work life, uh, life balance um, through 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 my work. I met my the right life partner which is you of course and uh, the business we started together you know had become really you know quite profitable uh, without requiring us to to spend long hours uh, you know on just on that and it, so that was off if, if that, i see that as the first sort of major uh, major life refinement uh, yes, and I, and I really see that as the first time in my life where we had, well, I had, I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way, plenty of time to relax and enjoy time with each other, uh, while we, you know, we also had a business and worked when necessary on that business, and we were able, for the first time in our lives, really to play a lot. Uh, yes, and, tennis, and that was yeah, the tennis yeah. days. Well, that, 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 you know what I'm coming to. That was the point where we, you know, we were able to spend large chunks of our, our time, of our times, sort of half of every year, in living in Southwest Florida. We acquired a second home there in Naples, Florida, uh, and that I see as a sort of another major refinement. And that, that in itself, is an interesting story. Our life there, and you know what happened there, and so on. And I'm, I'm sure. You know, we will be telling a lot of these stories on this podcast. That's not the only objective of this podcast for us to tell you tell you our stories. But there are there are a lot other um, goals that we have, which we'll be t- telling you about later. But we do have some interesting. We hope that you'll find them interesting stories uh, that we'd like to share with you. And, and the people of, we've met along the way, which oh, I think um, you're going to be uh, bringing guest uh, people on that we've met along the way that have had big influences in our lives, I would say, played a big part in. Yeah, um, absolutely right. In how we've met them and what we've done with them. Yeah. Or listened to. Completely agree. So, so from age 60 to where we are now, obviously we've made further refinements. um, And we'll save uh, some of those for, for further podcasts, but then the main thing, the main sort of uh, catalyst for us was when COVID struck, because we were, of course, very happy with our lives in in London. We had, you know, we had a a nice building there with an office, and it and also part of the building was our home. Um, we didn't, we could pretty much walk everywhere into the theatre, to restaurants, and so on. And we we didn't, you know, we knew that we probably would want to move out to the country at some point, but there was no real motivation. And I think that. You know the major catalyst being COVID and the pandemic. So uh, I think without that, uh, we probably would still be there in, in London. Yeah, but it was a decision made for us in a way. Yes. It wasn't yeah. a let's sit down and talk about it. The decision was made for us. We 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 agreed with what was going on in our heads, and we said let's do it. It was a it was an instantaneous. We're done with London. Let's let's get out of here. And it didn't take us very long to do what we decide, you know, what, what, what we did, which I think we told in our, in a, in a previous story, but soon, you know, we were, we were gone within five weeks of that yes, uh, that, decision. That, there is a lot about that on Very the, other, quick. Other, the other podcast, people and property, but we will be mentioning in that, that mentioning that here and in, a, in a, probably that will be our, our next episode. We'll be talking about our escape to the, countryside and how we come to be living in the beautiful village of Elmley Castle um, in Worcestershire in the sort of northwest corner of the absolutely gorgeous Cotswolds uh, and and in an area that we'd never even uh, heard of I mean you know with the most beautiful sunsets the most beautiful sunsets because I guess with the possible exception of the Gulf of Mexico (laughs) Well, yes, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. but they are. It, it is but lovely I mean, for this. There's so much here that's that, that's good, and we 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 feel blessed every day to to be living in this place. And we'd like to tell you the story about our escape to the countryside, and how we get to this point of uh, you know reaching this latest chapter in our life. Uh, we continued to run our business, but recently, um, ultimately, we decided to make another 
major refinement. At least we hope it's a refinement. We don't know how this is going to work out. Um, I certainly don't. Um, we've now stepped away from our beloved business, a business that we've worked in together for more than 35 years. So we will say that we retired from that business, but we hesitate, or at least I hesitate to say that I am retired um, for the reasons that I mentioned. Uh, I, I, again, see this as a, another major course correction as part of our ongoing life refining process, you know, optimizing our lives to fit the latest set of circumstances. But I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, even re retiring from our business was a major de decision, which I have certainly wrestled with and, and to a certain extent of continuing, continuing to wrestle with much more than you, Chris. Um, and, you know, in the process of sort of leading up to making that decision, I, I watched a lot of videos. Uh, you and I talked a lot. I read lots of materials about the dreaded R word. And I, frankly, I didn't find that, it, that those materials, those videos helped me very much. The one thing that sort of helped me um, was talking to my peers, to, talking to other people who'd been there before, who were about the same stage and going through the same thought process that is processes that I was going through. Um, some said that they that retiring was the best thing that they'd ever done they'd wish they'd done it much much sooner but others regretted it some warned me to be very very careful about my mental health um they talked about being depressed getting depressed feeling a loss of identity uh certainly you know sort of having the umbilical cord cut between my business and myself you know business that i've worked on every day for, for you know throughout my life one way or another uh it does you know i do have a sense of loss and and um you know i think there is i would say a grieving process that goes with that but i do also see you know let's face it you know you, <laughs> when you get to this time in your life you know that you've got you know that, well we all always know that we have a finite amount of time left but you feel it, don't you? Do you feel it, Chris? You feel it much well, I, more Yeah, acutely. but I was thinking, listening, what you, listening to what you're saying is, is I think work is when 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 somebody has only known work and work. When I mean work, is to to um, to earn money. Um, uh, I think it's it's a very different um, uh, challenge. I mean, you know, I could say I I work. You know, I might work. At, doing something around the house or doing cooking or something, but it's a different type of work, but work for, for money. Um, uh, and I think um, if, if you'd done it any sooner, because we do know people that have done it in their mid fifties um, end up very often going back and doing another job because it was too early. Um, I, you know, I, I, I guess the jury's still out on this, but I would, I would hope that the age that we've got to is probably just about right, because I think if we got to seventy, that's getting, gets getting a little bit too old. Although we're not young, but you know what I mean. At seventy, suddenly there is a cutoff point. I think so. I think this is probably for the adjustment period. These next few years, which probably will take um depending on how our path goes and the you know the the different type of work you you take up in terms of in your head of what you see as work or as what you see as play because i don't think we should think we should try and keep it on the same path not not just say work and play play and work i think we should say it as living doing doing what comes naturally to us what we want to do what we enjoy and being uh, being in this world uh, to to enjoy it, but without just you know, I mean, if if it means playing all day and playing pickleball all day or or walking up the hill all day, if that's enjoyable and you call that hard work to walk up a hill, which I would, incidentally, um, then so be it. So it, it's a, it's 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 a mindset, I think, of how we look at everyday life and have to sort of say, right, oh, I've stopped work in the word. I've stopped earning money to 
a, a different approach of, 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 of you know, the, the, the mental health issues that people talk about, which is why I think that's where a lot of people, their mental health suffers because they, they feel useless because they're not earning any money anymore and they're not, in their minds, they're not contributing to, the, to, to, to life as they've only ever known it since they were a young person, since you were t- before you're 20. I mean, we all, many of us start work, don't we, sort of in our late 20s, which you've done. And so we're talking over 50 years in the workplace. And well, that's been, one heck of a long time. As you've been talking, sort of all kinds of thoughts are going through my mind. Uh, I think it's a very, very complex subject. Um, you know, I think of one of the things when I was reading about this, uh, the, the, one of the uh, materials I came across was the book, The Four Hour Week, by I think somebody called, I think his name is Tim Ferriss. I may be wrong, but it's a very popular book. And he talks about mini retirements. Uh, and I think that's much closer to my own way of thinking is that you don't, rather than having this idea that so many people have, is that we'll get to one particular point in our lives where it might be 50 it might be 60 it might be 65 or 70 and then i will then i will retire and then i'll go on the golf course or, or whatever it is and that'll be you know that'll be the, the rest yeah. of my and every life. day will be the same every day will be the same you won't know whether it's monday or well Saturday i'm not going to sunday, i'm, I'm so. certainly not going to uh, criticize those people because i think it's each to their own but but um i like this concept of mini retirements because what he's actually saying is you know really it's better when you're young and fit and healthy to be having little mini retirements you know take a take a a month off take three months off take a six months off make that a mini retirement and do what you want to do then maybe come back and and do some some more um uh, revenue generation uh, but that in in some ways i think we've done that in in, in some in in a lot of ways i've seen myself as sort of being semi retired for a very long time you know like when we went to when we went to, to florida although you know we were still uh, very active business wise we you know we were playing an awful lot and we you know we were we saw we we came in to cuz most of the people in florida are retired one way or another aren't they i mean it's well like, yes it's god's waiting room i think people refer to it as and uh, you know, we we came in as the very young, didn't we? So we, we were in our forties. Yes. We were not uh, probably mid forties when we when we got there. And uh, you know, there were, we were youngest of all the. Group, we were like, really, you know, it's almost like what, what are you guys doing here? You know, <laughs> I think we were very much the younger end. That of course has all changed now, but um, but that I saw that as you know, almost, re- almost retired. I mean, we were living with retired people. We were living their kind of lifestyle, as you say, playing, playing tennis every day and, you know, boating and, and what have you. But we, but we were also putting, you know, some hours in uh, work, running our business as well. Uh, so, you know, I, I prefer that approach to it uh, than, than to, you know, set a, set an age and then just sort of completely yes. say, well, I'm no longer going to work. Because I don't know that I am. I mean, I might, I might find, you know, the. I certainly will find some things to do. I mean, you know, we are finding things to do. We're doing this podcast. You know, we, this is very much a hobby. It's not a business, um, but uh, it's part of wanting to keep one's mind active and and do new things and so on. But uh, going back to what I was saying. Coming to the decision to, you know, to retire from our much loved business was, it was a, that in itself was a fascinating journey and chatting it through with others was a, certainly a big help to me and it, and it continues to be. So that sort of brings me to talking a little bit about why we're doing this podcast. You know, what, what, what's the point? What's the objective of this, of this, uh, podcast? Uh, well. We, as we go into this journey, it's really a discovery um, part of our lives now. What's this? What's this all going to be like? You know, and we're getting we're getting advice from people, talking about it with other people, um, and we want to have our listeners, you, our listeners, come along with us on this journey, and also to be involved in it uh, because we we want to chat. We want to get input on it. People who've been here before, people who are approaching their retirement are thinking about how they are going to plan 
you know this this um sunset phase of their lives if you like uh so it, we want this to be sort of interactive we want to have we, we we've already talked reached out to a number of uh, very interesting people who are going to be guests on the show they'll be giving us perspectives uh their perspectives on what we're talking about their experiences and their their wisdom so uh, and there are certain, you know, going back to this idea of refinements, there are certain things that we, I mean, we're still planning this out and we'll do it with the help of feedback from, from our dear listeners, but uh, uh, some ideas that we have in our mind. So what you, some of the things we've talked about doing, Chris, um, can you remind me what they are? When you say doing, what are you, know, you talking in, about? In, in, in having uh, what kind of guests and and uh, subjects for forthcoming episodes? We've talked about our next episode is we're probably we're going to we're going to share w- with our audience how we discovered this area that we're now living in, why we escaped from to the country, and what that was like, what was good about it, and things that we've encountered. Yes, well, I, well, I, I think also I think we haven't we we haven't have we probably touched much on veganism, have we? That we did become vegans. I don't know whether we've talked much about we haven't, that. We haven't but, talked at all about it, no. No, but but we since becoming vegan, you six years ago, me three years ago, um, which I think is a um, an interesting one on its own. Has been a, a, an interesting journey for us and a, a fun a fun journey in many ways but the people we've met have been incredible um and we've um you know we found a, a an amazing company you know vegan cruises we love river cruising we we've met lots of fun people i think you 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 know you know you know they've got pe- ideas for people to come on through meeting them um i think through our our sport that once we we gave up tennis we started pickleball we love pickleball which well let's become... just stick just stick for a moment so, with the veganism because i'm, okay, I'm glad, I'm glad okay. you brought that up because you know that has i would say other people would disagree but i would yes. say that that was a major refinement um in in our lives I, I, yeah as you say i came uh, i came first on that but i think it was through a, ve- a vegan uh travel cruise a river cruise that you that turned you vegan because i remember our first conversation when i told you i was going vegan you told me uh, tony you've ruined my life which i didn't regard as a great start um no and, but it, and, didn't, it felt uh, like that when i said you, this well, i know i know you, you absolutely <laughs> meant it and you know i think uh, thinking about the village that we live in there are i don't know that there are any other vegans living in the village uh if if there are and you're listening please make yourself known to us we would love to uh, to meet to meet you and and share stories with you but most people here uh, i mean are, are lovely with us and but they i think that you know they think we're slightly extreme and weird in in uh, not ne- eating anything that comes from an animal um but uh, you know it's been a huge ben- benefit to us in in many ways not least the fan- fascinating people that we've met and i will will say that you know all of our neighbors and friends in the village of you know if they invite us to round for a party or whatever it is um you know they, they always go out of their way to to have things on the menu which which we can eat which is you know really wonderful uh, so yeah, we will which we, is well, amazing so yeah. and there's quite a bit that will be probably more than one episode because we have um you know we we have guests on the subject of veganism i'm sure you know, a lot of people are what i call vegan curious in meaning that they're not vegan themselves but they're quite interested in why people would make that decision and what you can eat and what you can't eat and how, how you make yes. things that you would love and all that sort of thing and i think there's sorry you know, just sorry just to interrupt tony my it looks like my uh, battery's about to die i'm not quite sure why because i've got it plugged uh, in well but probably it it's using, come up more, as a low using battery. more power well we may lose you that but that doesn't matter because we're coming to the end of our 30 minutes uh anyway okay. sorry about um, that but that's 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 quite right thank you for warning you know this is a we do this show as live we don't script it and we uh whatever happens in the on these episodes just happens we don't edit it either so uh, that makes it all the more edgy doesn't it yes, uh, yeah. but uh you know so we'll be talking about that christine touched on the sport that we discovered that probably again a lot of you won't have tried and that's pickleball we have um after a lot of research found a a, a club locally that we we play at in winchcombe and we've met some fascinating people through that as well and we've introduced people um 
uh, new people to the sport. Um, we'll be telling you about that and uh, we'll tell you about the game and and why we think it's something that, uh, well, it's certainly enhanced our lives in, in, in so many ways. So we want to talk about that. Um, and we will be... I'm sure getting lots of uh, uh, input from you, dear listeners, uh, about what we should, what you'd like us to talk about, because that's the main thing: is to, is to, uh, is is to gauge this, to refine it, I suppose, refine this podcast so that it uh, it it meets the the interests and needs of our our listeners. That's certainly yes. Anything goes, goal. right? We 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 want to we want people to join in and give their opinions and talk to us and talk about what they want to talk to us about. And we're very much welcome those people, won't we? And that we don't exclude um, young people from this because every, no. one, one day everybody is going to come to this phase in their lives and a lot of people prepare for it um, earlier. And you've, I've told you about the concept uh, of mini retirement that I learned about recently. Uh, and so I, you know, I would like to sort of, be able to reach back to the grandchildren and children and say, look, you know, this will come to you one day. So start thinking, yeah. <laughs> start thinking, especially in the challenging financial times that we live in now, it's more important than ever um, to you know, put some money aside uh, for this sort of time in your life. So have you anything uh, more to add? Chris, before no, I don't think so. Not at, not, dies not at this point. Us? Yeah, no, no. The trouble is, is once you start these things, you can go on and on and on and on. As you rightly say, we have to, we have to, uh, you know, limit it. Yes. Otherwise, we might drive everybody crazy with yes. our chat, 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 chat. So we <laughs> we, uh, we are setting up a Facebook page called Refinement, not Retirement. Uh, also a blog, um, and we haven't mentioned this, but we. Uh, not only put out the audio of this uh, podcast, but also the video. Some people prefer video, and it also helps us because we're actually in different parts of our home here uh, because that works better for the technology. And so uh, it helps us to see each other <laughs> uh, when we're not in the same room. Uh, but some people like to uh, actually see the faces behind the voices, although in my case, God knows why. Uh, but Anyway, uh, I think that's all we have for you on this uh, first episode. We look forward to our journey together. Please uh, continue to stay in touch and um, send us feedback. Probably that will be through our Facebook page. You can do that also through the Anchor platform, the Spotify platform that this will appear on. But we will be pushing this podcast out. Uh, via all the major platforms so thank you for your attention and for now thank you everybody it's goodbye from me tony and it's goodbye from me christine thank you everybody up a little bit oh. <laughs> <laughs> bye for now see you next time bye.